Raising water buffalo isn't exactly how David and Faith DiLoretto pictured retirement. Yeah, I know. But that's how Dr. David and wife Faith now spend their days. This was never a life goal or a bucket list item. It all began a few years ago on a family trip to Italy when they tasted sweet, creamy mozzarella from real buffalo milk. But when they returned home, they couldn't find it anywhere. And we realized there isn't any place you can get buffalo mozzarella. Nobody makes it here. So on a lark, we just said, let's, uh, let's get our own buffalo. And lo and behold, my wife found a few that were for sale. And before we were ready, we went ahead and got them and said, well, we'll just learn by trial and error. And suddenly, their former horse ranch became home to water buffalo. We just kind of jumped in feet first. So there's been a lot of catch up time. It ended up that the mozzarella was the hardest thing to make. So we were making aged cheeses for a year before we actually got the mozzarella that we were after to start with. Faith took cheese making classes and worked with state inspectors to design this creamery. David learned about water buffalo and ran the business. They love to lick. Now several dozen water buffalo later, they operate Fading D Farm, a buffalo ranch and dairy. On the farm, the days start early and end late. There are mouths to feed, newborn babies to check on, and water buffalo to milk. So they all have the personalities. This one loves to rub. Some of them like to stand off and get their nose rubbed. They definitely can have attitude. Which makes milk production unpredictable, especially when they become shy around strangers. We hid in a corner in the milking parlor to film this. Their milk contains higher butter fat than cow's milk, with protein that's easier to digest. The average water buffalo can weigh up to 2,000 pounds, but yet on average, they only produce a gallon and a half of milk a day. That's about what a goat produces or one fifth of a cow. That's why producing this kind of cheese is so labor intensive. Today I'm making roco. We add our culture and that has to sit for an hour to develop its full flavor. Then we put our rennet in, which causes it to coagulate. And after that, I cut it with the spino, and it will go in a crosshatch pattern, and that breaks up the curd and releases whey. When the pH is correct, it comes over here, and it goes into my brining table. You know, we're looking at close to 18, 20 hours that it's in here. It's a long process. It's a very long process. The cheese goes into the aging room for up to 180 days. Each variety has a different name, like the mild Rocco for Rowan County. I love seeing all my cheeses in here. When you see them sitting here and, and getting happy, you know, we come in, we wash them, we talk to them, they get patted a little bit, they get turned. It's just, it's that room when you walk in and you smell all that cheese, you're like, it's a happy place. I like to eat cheese. Um, <laughs> it's, it is very rewarding to be um, making something that people really love and enjoy. I've been very excited about that. It, it's not something I ever thought I'd do but it's been interesting to learn about all of it. You get to deal with the animals, get to be outside, so there's lots of positives to it, definitely. You know, we get to do more family things together. Again, it's all working and being on the farm, but it's time spent together. Uh, that's something we value a lot. And family members help with everything, from making cheese to selling it at a small store on the farm and local farmer's markets. It's nice to, to see them respond to the cheese when they taste it, and you know, everybody loves it and when people respond positively, it's, it's just super gratifying. The Fading D Farm name comes from a combination of Faith's initials, plus the DiLoretto's second career fading into retirement, which may not happen anytime soon. For Carolina Impact, I'm Sheila Saints reporting. Thanks so much, Sheila. Who knew we raised water buffalo in our area for cheese? I think it's so cool. The water buffalo cheese from Fading D Farm recently won several ribbons at the North Carolina State Fair. Well, from award-winning cheese to mouth-watering food, Green's Lunch is Charlotte's oldest restaurant. It opened back in 1926, and during the last 90 years, Green's has been owned by just two families. In this week's Carolina Cooking segment, Jason Terzis explains how they've kept customers coming back for generations with just a few simple items on the menu.